Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about self-loathing. And I wanna talk about this as from the concept or perspective of um, fearful avoidant attachment styles specifically. Um, but this is something that can touch other attachment styles in different ways when they're triggered in different forms. And I wanna talk about like how this really forms and what we can do to overcome and sort of break free from some of this because it's really, really difficult to go through this. So um, one of the first things that's really important to recognize is that this is more common than we think. And in my experience working with so many clients over the years, I found that self-loathing was something that happened the most for people who um, sort of emotionally sponged up a lot of the emotions of people around them growing up, perhaps in a recent relationship that lasted for a long time. And when a lot of that emotion didn't have a place to go, it became internalized. And when we didn't have a way to relieve ourselves from that, it got projected onto the self as a strategy to create some form of relief somewhere. And so what I mean by this, and this is actually, if it helps to hear this, this is actually something I really struggled with as a teenager and into my like very, very early twenties and something that I just thought was normal at the time. And, you know, some of my background was that I was fearful avoidant. I saw a lot of challenging emotions from people around me and a lot of lack of resolution. And I really cared about these people. And then sometimes that anger got displaced on to me and I really internalized a lot growing up and then that had nowhere to go over periods of time and so when I got to this point of being like a teenager it was sort of like it almost reached its tipping point and when I would make a mistake or when I would do something wrong or say the wrong thing or do poorly at school or whatever it was I took out so much of that hurt and anger on myself and that came out in a whole bunch of different ways, but at its root was in my thinking and the way that I had seen other people speak to each other around me, around my environment, um, the language, the, the things I had heard, I really internalized. And then I sort of like projected those things onto myself. And so it reached this point for me, and I'm sure a lot of people watching this video can relate to this, where it's like, you talk to yourself in your thinking um, with anger, frustration, rage. And then there's all this internalized, built up, you know, sponged up anger, frustration, rage. And this doesn't have to just be from like a household, right? This can be from a, your household. This can be from um, your, if you had like an influential coach or mentor growing up who was really difficult in their language, really critical. If you had a teacher, perhaps your surroundings, if you were bullied growing up, this is a huge cause. So what happens is you get exposed to all of this repetition and emotion of like angry words, angry language, difficult things. And your subconscious mind, this is how your own subconscious mind gets imprinted and programmed. And then when we don't have somewhere to put that, or we don't know how to properly resolve that, that's what trauma essentially is. Trauma, you can think of as, as like trapped emotion. Like we have in, an internalized experience. We don't know how to make sense of it and process it effectively. So it gets stored instead. And we go into coping around it. And so when you're somebody who struggles with self-loathing, one of the first things I just want you to hear and see is that it's not that you're worthy of being hated. It's that you've internalized hatred and it's become a subconscious comfort zone in your life, which means who are you with most of your life? Well, the relationship to yourself. So when you see or are exposed to hateful emotion at times, if it's repetitive enough, then it's going to imprint you. And then that's going to become yours as a byproduct. And then that's something you're likely to produce more of in the relationship to yourself. And so then it be, then it gets catalyzed by um, somebody saying something rude to you. And you're like, yeah, it's because I am X, Y, Z. And we say hateful things in the relationship to ourselves. Or when you make a mistake, you criticize yourself in a hateful way. And it's internalized and it can be from society. It can be from the media. It can come from so many different places. But if we learn as a default to, to, you know, judge ourselves so critically or to pick up on so much like critical, painful emotion, that's what self-loathing is. It's intense emotion with no place to go. That's imprinted you and become a part of your comfort zone. So with all of that being said, I just want you to see here, and I'll give you some tools to work through some of these things. It's not that you're worthy of being hated 
or so strongly disliked. It's that you just got programmed by really challenging situations that were sponged up as traumatic events that you didn't have a way to work through. You didn't have an understanding of. And so now it, it became yours as a byproduct. So you're going through this. Um, one of the first things that's really, really valuable and important is to recognize that somatic processing is a fantastic way of like re-regulating ourselves so we feel less reactive. And so that some of that sponge up emotion, we can sort of like look at, be with, witness without it being so overwhelming and so intense because it comes with us going into fight or flight response. So it can sort of lay the foundation or baseline if you're wanting to work through this in your life to do some somatic processing work because it will help you just get into rest and digest mode, parasympathetic nervous nervous system mode. And when we're in that mode, we tend to have a little more space around our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, and we become less reactive, which means we're less likely to take out our anger on ourselves. Um, so it's a very, very valuable tool. The next step is it is so important to do core wound reprogramming. And what happens is because of our experiences around us, sometimes we pick up these like really scary things or, or angry things or internalize this angry emotion. And so maybe we learn to believe, especially as children, because children personalize everything. So even if you're just exposed to like chaos or criticism or things like that, you learn to believe, okay, well then I'm, I must be unworthy. It's my fault. Or I'm unloved. Or if there's chaos around you, it's like, well, the chaos would stop if I was loved more. Or, you know, it's so easy as a child to just give meaning that's not necessarily at all a reflection of truth, but that's a reflection of a childhood mind that hasn't developed a lot of emotional literacy and wisdom just yet trying to find a way to decipher and determine what their experiences mean for them. And so you give this really painful meaning about yourself to things instead. And so commonly people who really struggle with self-loathing will struggle with core wounds. Like I am unloved or unlovable. I am unworthy. I'm not good enough. I am bad. Um, I'm defective or something's wrong with me. And so there'll be these really painful core wounds and these become these like belief patterns about yourself. And again, this these beliefs are just acquired programming. They're not who you are. They're what you've somehow acquired to believe yourself to be that's not an accurate depiction of the truth. And so in this programming and in these stories and ideas, when they get catalyzed or activated, like you make a mistake and then these ideas come up. Oh, I made a mistake because I'm bad. I made a mistake because I'm unworthy because I'm not good enough at anything. You know, so you have these ideas that come up. These ideas, when they're rotating themselves in our thought process, produce emotions and neurochemical reactions and all these things. And then you kind of feel helpless to it, right? Because this is not happening consciously. You're not trying to make this happen. This is happening subconsciously. This is happening on autopilot without your ability to control it when we don't know what's going on or we don't know how to observe it or create separation from it, let alone how to reprogram it. So then you get these ideas and they create all these really strong emotional outputs. And then we feel horrible. And then we usually cope from these horrible feelings with often not so healthy coping mechanisms, because whatever we reach for in a form of desperation is often like the short-term gratification stuff that we need to cover up how we're feeling or what we're thinking or what's going on. And then usually we further hate ourselves for that coping mechanism that we use. And it can become this really painful cyclical challenge. And so what I want you to see here is that you can reprogram these stories and ideas um, and you can get rid of them like truly so that you do not feel this way you can be compassionate to yourself when you make a mistake and still learn from the mistake we tend to think like oh I have to beat myself up enough so I don't do the mistake again that moves you back towards the problem that moves you back towards like repeating these challenges and then we judge ourselves then we cope and then we judge ourselves for the coping mechanism and it reignites this whole cycle all of those things are changeable things and so for anybody who's struggling with any form of self-loathing any like such intense, strong emotional responses that you feel like that's the only way and that this, you don't know how to escape this cycle. Just know that this is your subconscious mind's programs that's acquired, subconscious mind's way of coping. It's not who you are, nor is it how you have to spend the rest of your life living and feeling. And I promise that that is the truth. It doesn't mean it's on, you don't push an easy button, like you have to put some work into it, but I promise because I've really truly been there like to the nth degree and felt so much self-loathing and really struggled with it. 
And I feel that way, like zero in my life now. And that's because I put in the work and I also didn't leave room for self-loathing thoughts. I did so much reprogramming. Um, and I, I practiced actively when I would make a mistake being like, I made a mistake because I'm a human <laughs> and that's what humans do. We're not perfect. And I'm going to always make mistakes and I can still be accountable and learn and try to like investigate what led up to making the mistakes so I can look at root causes and work through those things. But that doesn't make me this like bad, unworthy waste of a person that makes me a human who's learning and growing and figuring out their journey. And so I just want to share that with you that, that that's no different from me or from anybody else. Um, and so we should have standards for ourselves that we can try to work towards slowly, but surely that say, I can move in a different direction. I can treat myself differently. Um, and I can be kind to myself. I can learn self-compassion. I can learn to speak to myself kindly in my internal dialogue. And for some people, and this isn't everybody's case, but for some people, maybe you had really, really mean people around you. Maybe you had a really mean coach or teacher, or again, like bullying is such a good example of this. And maybe you were talked to in such a mean way that that became your own internalized thought process. Right. But that's, that doesn't mean we have to continue to carry out that injustice in the relationship to ourselves over and over again in our lives. So just knowing that that can change and that's possible, I think is very valuable and helpful. And, and the second part there is reprogramming, subconscious reprogramming. Do the emotional mastery and belief reprogramming. It will help you find these beliefs and learn tools to reprogram them. And it will also help you um, learn how to regulate your nervous system and get out of that reactive space that we can feel and kind of internalize into ourselves when we're hurting. Um, so those are really important places to start. And there's a whole other course, if you're ever interested in going a step further, um, our addictive habits course, it's not just to deal with like addictions, but just painful coping mechanisms that we use when we're coming from a really emotionally charged space. And sometimes it's just like zoning out for too long and wanting to change that and upgrade that behavior through television or video games or whatever it might be that may be more extreme or excessive. And it, that of course will help you work on um, coping mechanisms that you use when self-loathing and knowing that we can reprogram those things too, to have really healthy coping mechanisms that serve us and grow us and heal us instead of numb us and try to drown out the pain. And then sometimes have negative consequences, um, like being hungover the next day, if you drink about a bunch or whatever it might be. So I hope this all makes sense. Um, this topic's like pretty important to me to share with you. If you have any questions about it or want to learn more or talk more about it, please let me know in the comments below. And if you want to come join and um, do a deep dive into some of this stuff and relieve yourself of some of these patterns, um, please come join me, try it out and hopefully stay for longer um, at PDS. And you can click the link in the description box below. Thank you for being here and for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in tomorrow's video.